we have a 22 year old male who came with a complaint of small phallic length and he claimed, claimed that he had only one sided testis. Uh, I mean, according to his case, that I have only one side. Okay. Yeah. So, that, so you have to go by his claim anyway. Yeah. So, like, so, I mean, yeah. so we have a history of unilateral testis. Mm -hmm. And what is very important, anosmia history is there. So I think if you stop there, so if you look at this, mm -hmm. this is a textbook case. The first case was a textbook case of PDGP. This is a textbook case of hypogonadotropic hypogonadism congenital. Why? There is small phallic length, undescended testis, anosmia. Nothing else is required. You can probably stop the discussion at this point of time. But these you have to take it very carefully. Obviously, you will not say that I can't spell. Mm -hmm. How do you do the examination first? Mate? There is a there is a kit which is available. Uh, there's a various spells are there for coffee, etc. Yeah, so there is actually a kit available yeah. for the uh, evaluation for the smell. But if it's not there, you can specifically look for things which are uh, in terms of strong odors like deodorants, like perfumes, coffee, these things are there. But there's a proper process. So yeah. next time we have to tell us how do you do the smell there. sensation. There's a desensitization which is also done. So once you smell that, you smell something else and then you use smell because that becomes important for that. So now this is very classical, but you carry forward from there. And give a normal birth history. Yeah. So on exam on looking at him, he had a unicorn body habitus. His arm span was more than his height, more than five centimeters. And coming to genital examination, his right testis was inguinal, which is 2 ml, and left testis was scrotal, which is 4 ml. So we have unilateral undescended testis, soft testis, pubic hair has developed to stage 3, and SPL is 6.5 cm. So again, pubic hair are present, both against UDGP, soft testis against hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, undescended testis and the smallest size go towards the congenital environment. Now, no gynecomastia. Gynecomastia is a very, very important thing to look at. We talked about pubic hair, testicular volume. The third thing will be gynecomastia. Now, if you have gynecomastia with hypogonadotropic hypogonad, with hypogonadism, which form is more likely? Uh, Hyperhypogonadism. Why? So, because the increased LH it leads to increased aromatase activity and increased 17 beta activity. Yes. So, when you talk about gynecomastia, there has to be an imbalance between testosterone and estrogen. If you have hypo hypo, there is no testicular androgen production at all. They may still develop gynecomastia and in a few cases, that is because you have an unopposed adrenal production. So androgen is coming from the adrenals and the testis. Now, if you have got no testicular production, only androgen is coming from the adrenals. Now, adrenal androgen predominantly are DHEAS and androcyl They have got a higher estrogenic activity. So, for a same amount, they will produce more estrogen as compared to testosterone. So, whenever you have a disconnect between the gonadarchy and the adenarchy, you will have gynecomastia. Physiological example of that is puberty. Puberty. So, puberty, you have adenarchy first followed by gonadarchy. Because of that, you have got more androcyl and DHEAs than testo, and then you have gynecomastia. Once testosterone increases, it gets suppressed. Second, uh, old age. Old age. Same thing. Your testis is gone, your, uh, your adrenals are working. So that's why you develop gynecomastia. So if you have got a hypo hypo, you may develop gynecomastia because your adrenals are working. But it may not be that much significant. But if you have hyper hypo, then your LH goes up, as Pratik says. And once your LH goes up, it will increase aromatase in the lady cell and it will suppress 17 beta HSD. So, in hyper hypo, you will have much more predominance of gynecomastia. So, no gynecomastia is a pointer against hyper hypo. Hyper -hypo. And it is also goes in favor of hypo hypo or CDGP or something like that. CDGP will have gynecomastia or not? So they not, may have, they may not have. I mean, pubertal, no, they, they will not they have. Will not have if you have gynecomastia, CDGP yeah. will out. So in your list of all the things, now you can actually gynecomastia also because if they have no adenarchy, if they have no gonadarchy, where is the estrogen going to be produced? Unless, so pre pubertal gynecomastia, as we discussed, is a pathological cause. Mm -hmm. Think of adrenal tumor, testicular tumor, and all those things. So CDGP will never have gynecomastia. Okay, now, uh, so the key points in this individual, like this individual had anosmia, not coming in order. Yeah, uh, Microfenus, let's avoid that. Undescended testes, 
and unicoid habitus and pubic hair present. So this all points towards the congenital hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. No so initial investigation showed that the LH was 3, FSH 3.8, testosterone 0 0.11 and prolactin is normal. So again, I think this is a very, very important message that we talk about, we talk about algorithms, we say, okay, LH more than 0.3, it means it's CDGP, less than 0.3 is hypo, hypo. But this contextual assessment is also very important. This is a 20, 22. 22 year old male. At that age, his test is 0.18, so it is like zero. His LH, FSH should have been, FSH should have been more than 25, 20, LH should have been more than 20 if he was hyper hypo. So this is clearly hypo hypo. See, basically, it is not a complete failure on the part of the pituitary, but there is a hypo hypo. When you say calamine and all, that's when your LH is zero. In these sort of, but this could be calamine also. And as we said, it's a spectrum altogether. But this, don't get confused here. This is not CDGP just because his LH is 3. This is permanent HH and he is not 22. So this is definitely a permanent HH. The picture is there. This is inappropriately normal for the level of testo, which is exceedingly low. And the MRI pituitary done, which was not. So, so which part of uh, pituitary or which part of the brain will like to look at, especially in this case? So the hypothalamus and olfactory bulb. Olfactory yes, bulb. that's very important. So olfactory bulb hypoplasia will be the thing which may indicate. But many of them will have a normal appearance also. Yeah. Can it also? So now we want Yeah. So what happened is in, he came initially in December 2018. At 22 years, and at them is uh, less than three, it was 4 ml, which is scrotal, and 2 ml inguinal. So, this individual was initially given a dose of 8 cg at 2000 international units bi weekly. Which so, why do you think HCG was given in this case? So, 8 cg leads to a better, uh, first of all, it's to increase in the intratesticular testosterone, which might lead to descent of the, uh, uh, the testes. So, what happened is that ultimately did lead to descent of the testes. Where so, there are two options of pubertal induction either using testosterone or you can use HCG, and some people use LHFSH both as a stimulating feature. Ideally, if it is hypo hypo, if you go by any guidelines, gonadotrophins are the ideal agents. But then they are very expensive, you have to give twice a week, and there are so many other factors. And they, fertility is not related. In our experience, even if you give it around the marriage time when you want to achieve fertility, they are quite effective. So just because you are giving testo now doesn't make them uh, less responsive, let's say, to go around dropping later on. In this case, we gave HCG because the testicular descent was also an issue. Now, then comes the next question. What controls your testicular descent in the abdominal phase and in the inguinal phase? So in the abdominal phase, it is controlled by the insulin like phytogene mm -hmm. and coming from the abdominal to the inguinal phase, it is your DHT as well as AMH and other mechanical factors. And CGRC CGR. coming through the end of the now. So the post-inguinal descent is, or the inguinal descent is basically androgen -driven. So therefore, if you give HCG, your androgen will increase. So this will be one indication. Otherwise, you've discussed that if you have undescended testes, there is no role of medical therapy now. You have to go for surgical right. intervention. This is a slightly different case altogether. It's a inguinal it's a hypo, hypo, also, yeah, yeah, it's so. a hypo. So it's a genuine treatment which we are giving. And you find that it depends on that. And also the serum testosterone levels of the drug thing also have improved it. This is a very good response. Good Normally response. we don't get. Because often what happens is that if you're treating somebody with hypo hypo with testo, mm -hmm. and when they want to become fertile, you switch to HCG their testosterone levels often don't become high because then they complain of erectile dysfunction and all. That, but this is a good response we had. So, so you, maybe his testis was waiting for HCG. It was always for a long time. They were more sensitive, sensitive to HCG. He was a, it's slightly irregular with this follow-up. He again came up in June uh, 2019. Uh, then we were shifted over to testosterone injections, 250 mg. Then he came after almost one year. Then what we noticed is that from the left testis from 4M had gone up to 12 ml on just testosterone injection. The light was right here also in case of So what do you right. expect? Do you expect test uh, testis volume to increase with testosterone? Fine? No. No. Because it is a STD dependent process. So if it is increasing, it will basically mean that there is a possibility of a transient or a reversal of the hypo which may happen. 
in june 2020 we thought it was further improved to 15 ml and 5 ml and that time also the serum testosterone levels were normal at around 260 is he on test too at that time he's on test okay so what finally we did we withheld testosterone for 3 months and then then we repeated when we saw that test was 136 so i it's so basically in the reversibility it is mentioned if it is more than 9 nanomolar is more than 250 But since he's, he was producing zero, and from there he came to 136, we would yeah, say that. So big, big response. His LHFS has also increased. His testo has also increased. So I think it's better. So what I'm trying to say, why this case is very important, is that this is in between your two yes. cases. This means that this is like a reversibility is also known in a case. So CDGP may become permanent, and permanent may become CDGP sort of a thing, which may happen. And this looks like a reversibility. And the most important sign. To look at is the testicular volume in that setting. If it is increasing, it's a good sign. Just a question: that Why only one side testicular is increasing? Increasing testicular. Maybe that testicular might well have had some damage which had happened because of the undertillage. Inguinal. Yes, and one more thing, sir. Inguinal, inguinal descent of testicles is uh, androgen dependent. Yeah. But sir, then testosterone will also cause that same process. Yes, but if you have a physiology, if you go with physiological part of it, that entire testicular. So when you give testosterone. It will go to the blood, and they will come back and go there. If you give HCG, it's the local environment testo will also increase. So this will be better as compared to the systemic going there. <coughs> Or you will need much higher level of testosterone to reach there and cause the effect. But if you produce there only, it will be much better. So we got to improve diagnosis of reversible congenital hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. This this individual is now on follow-up and off-testosterone therapy. Okay. So we see there are many questions there on that. So this again was a very interesting case. The lack of gynecomastia was really a pointer which was against hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. So uh, Dr. Arvind is asking about the risk of malignant potential. What do you think? It is there, but even after they descend, there is a malignant potential is there. Yes. So if you talk about the malignancy potential, the highest is basically when it is abdominal. If it is already in the inguinal, the risk becomes much less. So we have to monitor definitely there, and we have to be uh, looking into that. <coughs> Orchidectomy at the moment, because of given the feel and everything, we like to wait a bit in that regards. Neurokinin pathway will be more common genetic cause, exactly. So neuro T2 is the one which is known to be a reversible form of hypo. Hypo. So this was what we were coming. So I think this was a very interesting situation of how it reverses the neuro T2 as discussed is a possibility. Now, Dr. Rajiv is uh, talking about should testicular tumor need to be excluded because of unilateral enlargement? This is not an enlargement. The other side is smaller, so this is the problem. It's not that this size is bigger. This is normal. That size is smaller. That's the problem. So it may become degenerative, and we have to be very careful. There's no gynecomastia. There's no vitalization. Yeah, uh, this is not a testicular tumor in this situation. 